Hi, this is Lux, and before you click away, I know I have Ableton Live up, but if you're using a different DAW, this is still going to be applicable. Just so happened to be what I thought would be useful in the examples. Also, I know panning, you think, well, what is there to know? I, I can turn something to the left, I can turn something to the right. What else is there? So hopefully I'll be able to shed some light in a couple of different ways to do it and when and where you might want to use it. So first, grab this plugin called Stereo Tool. It's free. It's by a company named Flux, and I'll leave the link in the description. Not only does it have an incredibly cool visual, it is also super helpful, especially if these panning options aren't available to you easily in the DAW that you're using, or you'd like everything to be kind of all in one. In this situation, we're gonna use it primarily just to watch what's happening we're also going to be using a plugin called Utility in Ableton, which is gain, stereo, width, phase, mute, has a DC offset, has a handful of things, but we're only going to be using a couple of elements of it. Then I'm going to use a ping pong delay to help demonstrate what is and isn't happening. Okay, so I have a guitar clip on track one, and it sounds like this. <laughs> You can see in the visual the how the audio looks in the stereo field. Dead center, mono, left and right, and then the sides. Ableton Live's pan works much like other DAWs out of the box. If you pan hard left, as you're panning left, it's lowering the volume of the right channel. And if you begin to pan right, it's lowering the volume on the left. In other words, it's adjusting the balance. In order to visualize this, I put utility before stereo tool. So I can adjust the pan and we can watch what happens within uh, stereo tool. So let me hit play. Now I'll begin to pan towards the right. And I'll go to the left. Now I'm going to turn on the ping pong delay, and I have it at 100% wet, so we can really hear the effect. It's just going to bounce between left and right, left and right. So take a listen. All right, because we know that panning will, in this case, lower or change the balance from one side to the other, depending on which way we turn it. Let's listen and see this in uh, practice. I'm gonna go hard right. We're only hearing the ping pong delay when it hits the right side of the right channel. We're not hearing what's occurring on the left side. Now, as I begin to bring this back towards center, we can hear the left is being introduced. Now at this point, you might be asking, okay, great, big deal. I've known this. Uh, why are you telling me this again? Uh, so what I'm going to show you next is the other way that panning can be approached and where it's not changing the balance. It's actually summing or, and I like to say, folding the audio from the right or left channel and combining that together. So let me show you. I'm sure it's a lot better than the way I just explained it. Okay, so I have the pan on the utility back to center. And as a matter of fact, I'm just going to turn utility off because there's no reason for it right now. And I'm going to use the left or right. In this case, uh, I'll use right within uh, stereo tool. Now, when I turn this, I'm actually bringing the audio from the right side over to the left. And in this case, if I use the left knob, I would be bringing the audio from the left over to the right. Much different than the panning we did a moment ago. So let's listen. All right, I'm going to bring the audio from the left side over to the right. As 
as you can hear, the left side of the ping pong delay is still completely audible. And now we've combined the two together. So both left and right are now together and they are hard right. I think you can see some of the creative possibilities with that. And I'm gonna take this a step further. And within Stereo Tool now, as you can see, I have this pan slider. So now that I have the audio combined, left and right, together, watch what happens. It's just, uh, in a way, almost like you're laser focusing the audio within the stereo field now. I could bring this right here and begin to place elements within this area and really begin to have focused audio. I'm not saying that this is the end-all be-all way of panning, it's just different. And I really love the idea that you can place now more accurately, I guess you could say, or more uh, focused within the stereo field. Really cool. So you might ask yourself, well, is this really a mono compatible technique? Will we lose all of the audio once uh, if things are set in mono? So I have the master now in mono and we're gonna listen and see how this audio is affected. So I'm sweeping the stereo field in mono. We're not losing any volume change or other issues. All right, so here's an example. I have two tracks set up. Track one, I have the same guitar loop, but we have the left side panned all the way over to the right. So we have uh, this ping pong delay now set to 60%. And the second track, ping pong delay set to 60% wet. And I'm using a utility plugin that is panned hard right. And I put this before stereo tool so that we can see the effect of it. Now I'm going to play track one and we'll listen to the difference between the two. This is with both signals or both sides combined. Now track two. So very different. And this is why I say it's just really up to you to pick which one will fit the need that you have in your mix. But it's really nice to be aware of the differences and now it's just up to you to decide where and when to use it. Okay, so one final example. I have some stems from a band called Block Party, and these are just uh, guitar, synth, and drums for one, uh, from one of their songs. I'll start with the drums. I've got Stereo Tool open so we can look at it. So you can see some stereo information, most likely uh, part of the reverb. Some of the other elements, snare, hi-hats are off to the side. I'm going to bring the width in on the stereo tool to kind of focus it more towards mono, the whole loop. Okay. Now in doing that, it does affect the gain. The stereo tool does affect the gain when you're adjusting these sliders. That's why you might notice I'm pulling the gain back a little bit on the utility. And if you work with this, you will have to make some adjustments. That's why I recommend using some type of gain plugin uh, before Stereo Tool or use the input gains uh, on Stereo Tool itself to kind of compensate. Now that I have, uh, we have drums here, let's listen to the synth. and the guitar. So definitely a wide guitar happening. Let me play all three together. I'm 
mean, it sounds great already. Uh, this is just another way to do it. And I have created a group, two tracks, um, same guitar on uh, left and right. What I've done is created a little uh, effects chain. In the utility uh, on this first guitar, I panned it hard left. And I have the stereo tool open. That gives me the ability. Let's just solo that and play it. Remember the one on the right here is the drums. With this panned hard left, I can use the pan slider and stereo tool to adjust the location. I only want the left information from this uh, audio clip. Now I'm going to do the same with the right side. Okay, let's just start this up. Let me open stereo tool for the right. So let's play the originals together. Uh, this is going to, then I'll switch over to the uh, ones we've worked with in stereo tool. All right, so stereo tool. Back to the original. Now we could play with the synth a little bit here. Uh, let me open up stereo tool for it. And let's kind of position it somewhere in the uh, stereo field. Okay. We're going to bring its width down. So also, let's switch this over to mono and see how it holds up. So in stereo. And mono. Stereo. Let's listen to the sides. Mono again. And stereo. All right, thanks a bunch for watching. I appreciate it. Um, maybe I'll do some more when I get to actually play with this myself. There's something I want to work on after I read a little bit more about it called bookend panning, bookend panning. In a way, we're doing that. If you think about the two uh, guitars that were bookending the, um, the drums, but that was just the left and right sides of the dr uh, of the electric guitar. So in this case, we would actually choose a large group of instruments and begin to place them in various locations. And we'll do a little side by side to see how it works out. All right. So thank you for hanging out. I think this just gives you an idea of what you can do with panning and the different ways to approach it. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out.